Hello everyone, welcome back to YouTube channel Panther Schools. My name is Amit Singh. In the last video, we talked about what are classes and objects, how to create the constructors. In this video, let's talk about what are the methods, how to create those methods, what are the different way to call the method with the help of our APIS class. Before we go ahead, please do like, share, subscribe to YouTube channel. So a method is a piece of code or we can say a block of code which only executes whenever there is a need for executing the method or we can say that whenever we call that method to execute the piece of code which is written inside that method. This is one simple image which I have got from internet just for showing you how the method declaration goes on. So this is public is nothing you can see there is a method called public int sum and then these are some variables some parameters that you have. So this public is nothing it is an access specifier we can also say it is an access modifier. This public access modifier uh, gives you the ability if you make it as public you can access the method publicly outside of your class if you make it as uh, private then you can only access inside your class only this integer is a return type when we say that return type that means what your method is going to return as an outcome if you put void then it is not going to return anything then the sum this is the name of your method it could be some like in the previous video we have also talked about the walking or sleeping meow these were all the methods and then these are the parameter list which could be multiple parameters that you wanted to pass and then opening and closing curly braces we can also say the flower brace flower braces these are really important for any method any method should be ending with opening and closing curly braces and inside these two curly braces you could have your logic whatever logic you wanted to have let's quickly get back to your salesforce org and then we are going to do the practical demo for that so here we are inside our cat met, um, cat class but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on uh, like we'll go to file then select new and then we'll go to apps class but if you're wondering from where i came to this place so again you need to go to your salesforce environment and then click on this uh, gear icon and then select developer console use control while opening the developer console then it will open this console into the new window and then follow file new and apex class and i'll say arithmetic operations so my name of my class is arithmetic operations okay and here for example we wanted to we'll just take the example of our same method which is public integer we'll talk about how we decide what it is going to be and then sum and let's say that it is going to sum the two integer parameters so we'll say that uh, um say that uh, number one and then we'll say that number two okay as it is saying that i have a, a written type of integer we must need to return something so what we'll do and then uh, like what we will say is we'll say return number one plus number two so whatever the numbers we will be passing over here we are going to return that now here how we decided our method is going to return something or not so what was the problem the problem was we need to solve the sum of two numbers so the sum of two number is going to be another number which is number three now again it is a number so we say that okay go ahead and return sometimes we don't want it to return anything for example we say okay we have an object account we wanted to insert the account that's it and we don't want it to return anything we say just go ahead insert one row into the table called account that's it then in that case what we'll do is we'll say okay public void and we'll say insert account and you can just pass the name of your account and then that's it this is what you need so now here is a difference like this is the return type so whatever the return type you have you must need to return the same kind of thing over here if you don't return that kind of thing there is a special keyword called null you can also written that and you save it it is going to work perfectly fine 
But if you try to return something like this, Amit Singh, and try to save it, you will see the error. Now, where you will see the error, in the bottom you will see there is something of problems, and you will see it says line number four. Here it is again, it is showing the error. And problem says illegal conversion from a string to integer. Now this is an string, the return type is an integer. That's why we are getting that error. So we need to make sure whatever the return type we have given, the return type must be same with the variable that we are returning. Sometimes you might need to change the return type while you are logic, uh, writing the logic. You might came up with a, let's say that uh, outcome that you will say, okay, I wanted to return decimal instead of integer, right? So that kind of thing you have to make the change or you will be making the changes at runtime. Now we talk about this public, right? So if we go to arithmetic operations and then uh, I'm just copying the name of class, going to debug, open execute enormous window and I'll remove whatever I have from the previous video and I'll put the class name. I'm just simply creating the object of my class. As you already have watched the previous video, so you know how to create the object. If not, then feel free to watch the video and then continue with this video. Then what you have to do is you need to say opp.sum and then we are not passing a parameter. If you are not passing and then you try to execute it, you'll get the error method does not exist or incorrect signature. And the method name it is quickly showing you from the type class. This is the name of your class. Now what you have to do is you have to pass the parameters and then execute. You'll get executed without any error. We are not printing anything. So we don't need to go ahead and check that checkbox to see the debugs. But our method did work. And what if I go ahead and create the same method. Okay, I'll say in teaser sum without a parameters and then as it is an integer i'm not returning anything so i'll say okay return none go ahead and save it now you will see right here you got this and then again if you get back over here and you say okay i have another method with the same name go ahead and save it so you can see right we are able to execute so unlike the constructor we can also have the methods the same with the same name with different parameters or we can also have a method with the same name with different return type let's try to have like this i'm going to instead of an integer i'll change this to decimal also change this to decimal and this uh, then let's need return uh, return number one plus number two so i'm just what i'm doing is i'm just changing the variables that's it not variable the data type of method this time it is returning decimal instead of integer so now what you'll see is you will see missing semicolon there is somewhere we are saying okay missing semicolon you see the problem we are typing two type two times the return is written there i'm going to remove that and go ahead and save you see we are successfully able to save this now if you go there to debug execute and pass some variable as it is a decimal it will take something like this and execute this now with this what i wanted to tell you is that one method can have the same name same number of parameter but with different return type that means it is going to return the different information to you the different here it is decimal here it is integer then you again have a parameter not parameter you again have a method with the same name with the different parameters and different written type like this okay now why i have written this method like this you might be asking the question oh hey wait hold on hold on you told us void cannot return anything but you are still writing return statement over here how come this again this is a very I'll say critical, not critical, very good question for the interview. Where the interviewer might ask, can we return or can we write or return a statement from uh, inside a method which is having a written type of void? So, most of the developers say, no, we cannot do that because void is 
for the same you cannot return anything but if the question is can we write or return a statement inside a method which is void then the answer is yes you can write or return a statement inside the method called void which is returning void but if the question is framed in a different way can i return a value from a method which is written as void then the answer is no so these are the two different question writing a return statement is a different question and returning a value is a different question so that is what you need to keep in mind next thing we talked about this is specifier this access modifier or access specifier we talked about if we make this as public then we can access this method out of our class otherwise we cannot how it is let's quickly go ahead and make this method as private we already talked about this public we are able to access now i'm making another method called sum which is again now using the private access modifier so i'll go ahead again debug and execute in omnis window i'll say operation dot sum and then try to execute now what we got is we got the error method is not visible the reason the method is not visible because it is private now let me give you a very real time example for this say that uh, uh, you have a we all might have visited to some places for holiday or some enjoyment right so you might have stayed inside a hotel so when you are staying inside a hotel hotel is a private property under that property there is a swimming pool so all the we'll say that tenant who are living there they can use the private pool the swimming pool inside the hotel but any person who is not living inside that hotel cannot use that pool because that pool is a private property and then when we talk about beach beach is something which is a public property anyone can go and access the beach and uh, enjoy the beach right so that is what this private says you can only access this private inside this class only cannot access outside of the class here we are trying to access the method with the help of an object of the class we cannot access that now if you go there and you try to use this sum within this method like this this is how we call our method inside another method just to use the name name of your method opening and closing parenthesis and if there is any parameter for example um we are calling this sum method here say sum and say 23 24 because this this method this sum method accept some parameters so we have to give the value and then the parameter value here 23 24 it must be of the same type the parameter or defined inside a method so if you try to make it as a string and try to save it you will get the error and you will quickly see over here under problem section so you need to make sure sometimes you get this error like method does not exist or incorrect signature kind of whenever you get this kind of error just go ahead and check what is the signature of method what it does accept and how many parameter it does accept what kind of parameter it does accept this is really important to resolve these kind of issues so and this is something i wanted to discuss about public versus private there is one concept which i forgot to tell you in the previous video the constructor could also be private so if we go there and say private and the name of our class what could be the significance of making a constructor as private we'll talk about this we'll just make the constructor as private this is constructor right now let's go ahead debug execute and try to execute we already have the code and everything in place execute it what you got is method not visible void arith uh, this arithmetic operations this is something you'll get the error it will not tell you the constructor is not defined or something like that you will see the error called method is not visible and this time it is going to give you the name of your class itself because your class name is similar or we say the constructor name is similar to the class name 
So if you have a class which is having a private constructor, you cannot instantiate that class. That means you cannot create the object of that class. Now let's do one again. We are going to do one more. Uh, say that uh, operation over here. We'll try to do one more demo. We'll create one another constructor with two parameters. Let's say that integer number one. So just created one uh, again another constructor which is again public. Then that constructor is accepting two parameters. Those are type of integer. Now let's go ahead and try to debug this. Now here what we'll do is we'll say okay go ahead pass the parameters the required parameters of required data type go ahead and execute it. We are, we are still getting the error right because our constructor is private. Now let's go ahead and remove this constructor okay and then public constructor we are going to leave as it is. So just remove the constructor which is private. I have saved the class. I'll go ahead and click on execute. We got the error method does not visible which is sum. Okay, we are getting error because of this. We'll go ahead and execute this. The code is successfully executed without any error. Now I will go ahead and do control Z for having this private constructor and again save this. The reason I wanted to do this experiment again because earlier we had that we were calling that method which was private. But we wanted to make sure if there is a private constructor and there is a public constructor, will that work for us? So we'll go ahead and then go to execute, open execute in ominous. And this is a private constructor. We are making the object with the help of our public constructor and click on execute. And this is working fine. So whatever all we have seen previously, we were getting the error because of we were calling this private method which was sum. So if your class has only a private constructor, you cannot create an object. But if your class has a public constructor and you are using that public constructor to create the instance of your class, to create the object of your class, that is going to work perfectly fine. I apologize for creating the confusion, but that was my bad. That was my mistake, which I didn't look that we are where we were calling this some method from the anonymous window as well. So well, this is it for this video. Thank you for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put down into the comment section. Thank you.